This is an ABC News special report. The House impeachment hearings. Now reporting, George Stephanopoulos. Welcome back to our coverage of the impeachment of President Trump. The hearing room at 1100 House Longworth Building. Still empty right now as members coming back from the floor from a vote. But as they return for the second half of this hearing with Ambassador Marie Ivanovich, we have breaking news also out of Washington, D.C. Roger Stone, one of the president's longest serving political advisors, longtime friend of the president, has now been found guilty on seven counts of lying to Congress and tampering with a witness. This is a spin off of Robert Mueller's investigation. Uh, he's now facing up to 20 years in prison as you see him heading into the courtroom with his wife earlier this morning. I want to go straight to our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, with the latest on that verdict. George, you're correct. This is seven federal felonies that Roger Stone has been convicted of, all dealing with the fact that he lied to Congress about his efforts to get the information that WikiLeaks was going to provide concerning dirt about Hillary Clinton during the 2016 election. And why did he do it? Prosecutors in the case this week in their closing arguments pointed out to the fact that he did it to protect the president or then candidate Donald Trump. Let me give you a statement from the closing arguments. Quote, Stone knew that if his information came out, it would likely look really bad for his longtime associate, Donald Trump. So he lied to the committee. So again, George, this is a confidant of the president, a man who described himself as a so-called dirty trickster, one who loved Richard Nixon, who's now been convicted of seven federal felonies and now facing prison time. George. Testimony during the trial included evidence of phone calls between Roger Stone and the president during the campaign where the president was being informed about the what, what WikiLeaks may or may not have been doing. That testimony came from the president's former deputy campaign man, manager, Rick Gates. I, I want to go to John Carl for more on this, our chief White House correspondent. And John, as I said right here at the start, Roger Stone has been long associated with, with President Trump, learned at the feet of Roy Cohen. Uh, Roy Cohen, in fact, introduced uh, uh, Donald Trump to, to uh, Roger Stone back in 1979. George, in some ways, uh, you can look at Roger Stone as the founding father of the Trump presidential uh, campaign, although he played a minor role uh, in the 2016 campaign and, in fact, was fired as an advisor early on in 2015. Uh, Roger Stone was Donald Trump's first political advisor. Uh, he was somebody who has been pushing Donald Trump to run for president, really on a four-year basis, going all the way back, you could argue, to the late 1980s. Uh, and when, the, when uh, Donald Trump uh, briefly uh, formed an exploratory committee in 1999 to run as the Reform Party candidate, it was Roger Stone uh, that, that was uh, pushing all of that. So this is somebody about as close uh, to the president's political ambitions uh, as you can find. He also, by the way, was a longtime uh, partner of Paul Manafort. They had a lobbying firm uh, here in Washington, uh, Manafort, Stone, and Kelly. Uh, and uh, they, they were they were longtime partners. He was also, when Donald Trump hired his first paid uh, political advisor uh, for the 2016 uh, cycle, he hired a, a guy by the name of Sam Nunberg, who worked for Roger Stone. This is somebody uh, who really and, was the person that put the political bug in, uh, in Donald Trump? And John, he was formally fired from the campaign, I think, in, in, in late, 2015. 20, late 2015, but he maintained contact with President Trump. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. He, uh, he talked with, uh, with President Trump, uh, advised uh, the campaign, campaign supporters uh, throughout that campaign. It was a hot and cold relationship. At times, uh, Trump would get irritated that uh, what he thought, what, what he saw as Roger Stone taking credit for his uh, political success. But make no mistake, uh, uh, Donald, uh, Donald Trump saw Roger Stone as a as a, somebody he would talk to and be advised on in politics going way back uh, to the 1980s and throughout the 2016 campaign as okay, well. Okay, John, thanks. Our reporter, Ali Dukakis, was inside the courtroom as the verdict was read. Ali, I think we have you on the phone right now. Just give us a sense of the scene. Hey, George. So right now, reporters are frantically waiting outside for Roger to leave. He looked extremely upset when he was found guilty on all seven counts. He faces a statutory maximum of up to 50 years in jail. Uh, his wife was sitting in front of me, hugged a family friend, and said, he'll be okay. I'm not sure that that uh, feeling is reverberating among the rest of their family right now. Uh, they were clearly extremely upset. They had hoped that at least on one or two counts he would not be found guilty. Uh, but you could really hear a pin drop. It was a sudden verdict. They didn't let us know that the jury had a verdict. They just said there was a note. So... 
This went down very quickly and swiftly. And yeah, the, the jury deliberated. They began deliberating only yesterday morning, and they reached a pretty quick verdict. That's right. And they were supposed to continue this case. The trial was originally scheduled to go through the week of Thanksgiving. So the prosecution clearly felt that they had made their case. That's why they wrapped early. Just really a day and a half in deliberation for the jury. Thank you, Allie. This verdict closes in another chapter in the investigation of Robert Mueller. I want to put up on the screen right now the number of Trump associates, close Trump associates, who reached either guilty pleas or were convicted. As, as John Carl mentioned, the president's former campaign chair, Paul Manafort, guilty. The president's former national security advisor pleaded guilty, Michael Flynn. He's still awaiting sentencing. Rick Gates, the for president's former deputy campaign manager, also pleaded guilty. He was a strong cooperating witness in this case right here. Foreign policy aide George Papadopoulos. Of course, the president's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, who's serving a prison term in upstate New York right now for his role in the hush money payments, campaign finance violations of President Trump. And now the president's longtime uh, political associate, Roger Stone, found guilty uh, as well. Uh, Dan Abrams, uh, Robert Mueller was criticized for his testimony before the Congress, but quite a lineup there on top of, of course, the indictments of those Russian nationals for their interference in our campaign. Well, and, and I would argue that's the most single most important of the indictments is of the Russians because that was for hacking. Um, and I really would encourage anyone who's interested in this topic to go and read those indictments because the two sets of indictments of the Russians really do lay out the roadmap of exactly how the Russians did what they did. But today, the news of Roger Stone will and does come back to Donald Trump to some degree. The prosecution's theory in this case was that Stone was lying to protect Donald Trump. And he didn't present much of a defense in the case. I mean, it, it was a pretty easy case for prosecutors to prove that he was lying, that he was trying to obstruct, that he was trying to interfere with a witness testifying. And it seems that they had just kind of hoped that maybe they'd get one juror and they could hang the jury. And now you have to believe that based on the lack of defense he presented, based on the type of defense he presented, based on the fact that he didn't enter into any kind of plea deal, et cetera, that he's hoping for a pardon. Uh, from the president. And, and, and that, that gets to the point. Talk about worlds colliding, uh, Kate Shaw, as we talk about Paul Manafort. One of the things that Ambassador Ivanovich was accused of, or is it the president was, was concerned with, was that the Ukrainians were trying to interfere in his election, including the release of the ledger of Paul Manafort that got him fired because of those illegal payments. Of course, he's now uh, in jail, and there had been some talk that part of what was motivating the president was to prove that Paul Manafort had been set up, maybe to set up a pardon for him as well. Right. So, so there have been the possibility of pardons have been on the table for a number of the president's associates. We haven't seen any yet, right? So I think that that sort of pardon watch will, will be on with respect to Ro Roger Stone in particular. Um, but you do see a lot of connections between the facts that underlie this indictment and now conviction and the sort of sequence of events at, at, that were that's before Congress right now at a high level of generality, which is, you know, this is about foreign interference in elections, right? So so we still have sort of the, the fallout of the Mueller investigation into the 2016 election interference. Um, and at the same time, the conduct being alleged in the impeachment proceeding um, is largely about trying to get assistance um, to aid in the president's re-election effort. So, so they're conceptually linked. And, you know, the one other thing I would say is I feel like this conviction has to be a reminder that lying to Congress uh, is an indictable offense. You can be convicted for it. So to the extent that there are people who haven't yet testified in these impeachment proceedings, um, this has to serve as kind of a stark reminder that there is real criminal exposure if you lie to Congress. Gordon Sutherland might be thinking about sure. that as well. But, of course, the pardon power, another area where the president's power is very, very, broad. Very, very broad. He can wield it in whatever way he likes. And the only real check on it is the sort of political process. I mean, we've seen presidents in the past issue pardons that have um, garnered a lot of criticism from the public and maybe have affected re-election prospects. Gerald Ford comes to mind. But it is the president's power to deploy at his discretion. And Roger Stone is surely hoping that that discretion will be used here in his case. Terry Moran, I want to bring you in on this and, and, and talk about the Dan Abrams talked about the indictments, of course, of the Russian nationals, the importance of that. Of course, the, the import of the one of the theories that the president was pushing on the phone call with President Zelensky with Rudy Giuliani, this crowd strike theory is designed to show that it was Ukraine, not Russia, who was behind the election interference. And, and this is another example, George, of the president not believing his own government, the government of the United States. Uh, he, he has scorned the intelligence community's findings uh, that it was Russia that attacked the United States, attacked our democracy and election. Uh, and he doesn't credit what the Mueller investigation clearly lays out in these indictments, that it was Russia 
through specific uh, officers of the military intelligence at, at specific places, Mueller found, that attacked, that uh, uh, launched the attack on the United States. The president is after this conspiracy theory that, no, it was really Ukraine that attacked uh, the United States. And that is one of the ties to this impeachment hearing. The other is exactly what Kate Shaw just said, which is lying to Congress is a crime. Uh, this was this is a vindication, this verdict, of the power of Congress, the power of the House Intelligence Committee to investigate. And Roger Stone took this kind of scornful attitude about it all, almost a kind of Trumpian attitude. Ah, who dare cares me, about yeah. Congress? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no one cares about them. Well, somebody does care, jurors, who are told that it is a crime to lie to Congress and they will find you guilty and send you to prison. And there are people, like Gordon Sondland, maybe, who want to pay attention to this verdict today. John Carl, the president's still paying attention to the news uh, right now. He's already tweeted showing where his sympathies lie. Uh, absolutely. He, uh, and, and I will have a chance to ask him directly about this, uh, uh, George. The president's got an event at 2 o'clock at the White House. Uh, we will be in that forum, and I will ask him. But here you see uh, what he has just said about Roger Stone via Twitter. So they now convict Roger Stone of lying and want to jail him for many years to come. Well, what about, and then he goes through the list of, uh, you know, Crooked Hillary, Hillary Comey, Struck Page, the, uh, the list of people that he thinks have been out to get him uh, over the years, even suggesting, by the way, in there, uh, that Mueller himself uh, uh, should somehow be found guilty for something. And, and, Pierre, one of the things you're seeing there in that list the president has, 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 uh, has following Roger Stone is uh, one of the things that he's been saying uh, for months, now going into years, that the initial investigation, FBI investigation into his uh, campaign was corrupt from the start. No evidence of that has come to light so far, but we are awaiting an inspector general's report uh, looking into the origins of the Russia investigation. George, we are. We, the inspector general report we think will be coming out perhaps as early as early December. Uh, he's looked at, again, as you said, the origins of just how the Russia investigation first started. Were those uh, surveillance warrants uh, duly lawful, uh, which were put forth by uh, the Justice Department? Also, we have a separate investigation uh, beyond the inspector general investigation being conducted uh, by the attorney general and a, a former and a, a federal prosecutor on his team that is looking at whether any laws were broken in connection with how the origins of the investigation started as well, George. And one of the things I think is important to remember about this Stone uh, conviction is that the WikiLeaks uh, whole scandal involved the fact that the U.S. government, the intelligence community, determined that WikiLeaks got their information, the dirt and the emails that they were publishing concerning Hillary Clinton from the Russians. That is the contention of the U.S. intelligence uh, community that they put forth, George. Okay, Pierre, thanks.